welcome to Kindergarten with Miss J. If this is not your first time, then welcome back! I am so happy that you're all here. It's another beautiful sunny day, but you have all made my day that much brighter just by being here. So thank you for coming. Now today's video is a little bit longer than usual because we have an extra special Explore Make Do and I cannot wait for you to see it. It's an important one so I really hope that you stick around. But remember, you can always stop and start the video as much as you need to, so don't worry about that. But let's get right into it. Now today's quote of the day is, you are much stronger than you think you are. I think this one explains itself, but I wanted to mention it's not just physical strength, it's also mental strength. Sometimes we hold ourselves back because we're afraid or we're unsure whether we can do something. But you're stronger than you think you are. Remember and remind yourself of that. And it's a little bit of a hint going into what of our special thing is today that we're going to do. The people that we're gonna to meet today, well, they have to do that too because sometimes their job is a little bit scary and they need to remind themselves, I am stronger than I think I am. <laughs> All right, so we're doing things a little bit differently. I'm actually going to tell you the letter we're doing today, but you're gonna guess the sound it makes. So today's letter is F. Say it with me, F, F. Very good, there's our little F right there. So let's sing our ABC song together. And when you say F, I want you to raise your hand and make a silly face. You can do it. Okay, are you ready? Let's sing. A, B, C, D, E, F. Silly face. G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z, or Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time won't you sing with me? <gasps> Yay, you did such a great job. Thank you so much for singing with me. You were wonderful. So now let's have a look at our upper and lowercase f. <laughs> there is our uppercase f. Wow. Remember, uppercase means big letter. So there's our big letter, f, f. Good. Now let's have a look at the lowercase f. Wow, they look a little bit the same, don't they? Uppercase has a straight top. Whoop, he's got a straight hat. But lowercase f has a little, a little hook hat. So he's a little bit different, but a little bit the same. Great, now here is the uppercase and lowercase f. Now you can really see that they're quite similar, aren't they? makes it easy to remember. Now it's time to go on our letter hunt. Okay, here we are everyone, and I should say that today's message has a little bit of a hint about where we're going. Can you figure it out? Okay, let's see. For today's field trip, we are not playing with fire. Okay, think about where we might go. I'm not telling you. <laughs> okay, let's look for our F. Ready? The first word is four. <gasps> I see it. Let's circle uppercase F. And so remember, this is a letter. And when the letters are squished together, they make a word. And when we have lots of words together, 
that finish with a punctuation, that makes a sentence. And we'll talk about what punctuation is, but so you know this is a letter and this is the word. And because this word is my very, very first word in my big sentence, I need to use uppercase F. Okay? Good. For today's, no F, field, oh, I see a lowercase F. Did you see it? Make sure you point. Where's the next one? Do you see it already? Okay. Trip. We are not playing no Fs with fire. Ooh. Did you see that one? Oh, and my marker is red, just like fire. Ooh, okay. Hmm. Let's count. There aren't many this time, so it shouldn't take us too long. Ready? One, two, three Fs. Great job, everyone. Okay, now it's time to talk about the letter sound. But like I said, we're gonna guess it. So I'm gonna show you some video clips and I want you to listen to the first sound that each of those words makes. So for example, if you saw cat, k, cat, the first sound is k. So for everything you see in the video, Say the word out loud and listen. What letter sound is it? Ready? Good luck! Okay, everyone, did you guess what it is? Okay, when I say three, I want you to say the sound that you think F makes. Ready? One, two, three. I heard it. Did you say Very good. That's the sound that F makes. Now, before we do F card, Let's remember what we've already learned. I always like to review things. It helps me to remember, okay? So let's say it together. Ready? M, M, mug. You go. Very good. S, S, sun. Very good. Okay, and our next card for F. F, f, fish, your turn. Yes, great job, let's do it together. F, f, fish, great. Okay, remember, every letter makes a sound and F says f, f says f. You got it. Okay, everyone, it's time to write our letter. Now, if you have a dry erase board, you could get that, or a paper and pencil, get that now. Okay, and now, once you have all those things together, let's get started, and I've got my sky, grass, dirt, and I linked it below so you can print it for free from another teacher. So let's start with our uppercase F. And like all of our uppercase letters, they start in the sky. So, we're going to start. And we're going to start in the sky and go down to the bottom of the grass. Don't go into the dirt, just to the grass. Then we go across, across the sky. I'm just going to do it a little bit heavy so you can see it. And across the top of the grass. Let's try it again. So we go down from the sky to the grass, and across, across. Very good. Now, lowercase f is similar, but we've got a little hook at the top. So, we start in the sky as well, but we start a little bit into the clouds. And we go to the top of the sky, and we make a little hook, and then down into the grass. So a little bit similar, right? And then we cross it, boop, 
like that on top of the grass. So let's try again. Stay in the cloud a little bit down. Okay, see how I'm starting a little bit down? And I go to the top of the sky, make my hook, and down, and across. Let's do that one one more time. Up and around, down, and across. You got it. So remember, there's a handout down below to help practice tracing and writing the letter F. It's free. So feel free to print that out and give it a try. All right, everyone, it is time for our letter craft. Now remember, this handout is down below so you can print it out. So feel free to do that. Pause the video if you need to. Then you're going to color it, cut it out, and get it ready to go. Once it's all cut and you have an extra piece of paper to glue it on, come and meet me back here. All right, this is probably our easiest one. So let's just color the F any color you want. I chose green because I was thinking like a stem of a flower. All right, then you can glue down your pot. Again, do some really cool designs. It's totally up to you. Now I'm gonna put my flower at the top and my leaf somewhere in the middle, like it's on its stem. So color your flower any way you like and same thing. You know, I love art because you can do whatever your heart desires. So glue everything down and we're good to go. Okay, show me your craft. Oh, it's so beautiful. Oh, I love flowers. That's the best part about summer, isn't it? All the flowers in bloom. All right, well, like last time, we're gonna decorate our paper with upper and lowercase f. So let's do that together. I'll start uppercase, so down, across, across. Oops, that was a bit messy. And then lowercase f, same size, but a hook, and across. Let's try that again. Down, across, across, just on the one side and a hook, down, and across. Okay, let's decorate our page. Great work, everyone. That's a lot of Fs. You did awesome. Remember, F says, very good. Okay, now we're going to write all the words from our video and then we'll put them wherever you have some space. So let's try to remember what we saw in our video. All right, let's have a look. Fish, fork, frisbee, very good. Fence, fog, fire, Firefighter. Oh, this is a really big hint. Do you think you know where we're going? <laughs> I think that kind of gives it away, doesn't it? All right, let's write all of those words down on our craft and then meet me back here. Okay, all the words are going to be down below in the description. So remember, grown ups, you can do all the writing if you like, or your little one can draw a picture for each of the words. That would be fine as well. Or if you want them to copy the writing down, they can do that because any practice is really good practice when it comes to writing. Bing! <laughs> Magic of television again. There it is. All right, and I think maybe I forgot to say flag. So I've got flag there as well. So once you have all of those done, that's great. And remember to keep all of these crafts because we're going to put them in a little book together and it will really help when we're reviewing our letters. So great job, everyone. Okay, it is that time, my favorite time, and our surprise. Do you think you know where we're going for Explore Make Do? I think you probably do by now, but that's okay. <laughs> it's still a surprise. And I'm so excited to show you where we're going. So for this explore, make, do, we are doing, say it out, do you know? <laughs> All right, let's have a look. All right, well, you probably guessed by now, but just in case you haven't, let me tell you where we are today. We are at a fire station. Now this fire station is a little smaller than some because it's on an island. 
if you go somewhere like a big city, you're gonna find way bigger fire stations, but this one is kind of in the middle in size, and I'm so excited to go in because I've never, ever been to a fire station before, and I don't even think I've spoken to a firefighter before, and we get to do both of those things today. So I'm really excited. Come and join me. We're gonna learn about firefighters, this fire station, and most importantly, fire safety. Good morning! Thank you so much for having us today. Thanks for coming to visit. Awesome! Well, I wanted to start by kind of figuring out what your title is. Because your title is Assistant Chief. So what does that mean? So, um, in, in the fire department, we all have different jobs. And we have different jobs at a fire, too. So the firefighters are doing the work. They're the ones dragging the hoses, carrying the axe. The captains um, help organize the team. And they're the ones in charge of a truck, for example. And then a chief is in charge of a bunch of firefighters and a bunch of trucks. So at a fire, the chief would kind of be the one in charge of coming up with a plan of how to fight the fire and then help all the firefighters to come up with a good plan. Wow, and you can do that like on the fly right away? Quick. That's what, that's what we got to do. That's what your training's for. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of training, what did you have to do to get to this position? Because you're high up now. Yeah, so I've been a firefighter now for 20 years. And wow. so I was a firefighter for a long time and then I was a captain. And I actually just became a chief two weeks ago. So oh I'm a brand gosh. new little baby chief. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so it, and it, there's lots of courses, lots of school. In fact, one of the things that I really liked about becoming a firefighter is you get to learn lots. There's so many different things to learn. So that's why I, I like doing this. Amazing. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you think we could have a little tour? Please. Awesome. You guys let's... want to go inside? You want to go look at the truck first? What should we do first? Uh, maybe let's do the truck. Okay. So just like I was saying, firefighters have different jobs at a fire, the trucks have different jobs too. So here we have three of our fire trucks. That one at the far end is Tender One. Then we've got Squad One, and then we have Engine One. So the first part of the name tells you a little bit about its job and what it does, and then the one part means they're all from Fire Hall Number One, and that's where we are here in downtown Ganges. So the first truck over there, the tender, is a water tender. It carries lots of water. It also has a bunch of tools, but its main job is to carry water. The middle truck, the squad, it doesn't really carry any water. It does carry a bunch of tools. It's kind of like a Swiss Army knife. It does lots of jobs, but none of them really, really well. <laughs> and then this is an engine. And the main job of an engine is it's got the pump for putting out the, or pumping the, the water to put out the fire. It also carries a lot of tools. It's a big toolbox. This truck is brand new. We're actually just still getting it organized. It just started last week. So it's just like me, it's like a baby truck. Here's the pump over here. And this is the part that is, it's kind of like in your kitchen or your bathroom and you've got taps for flowing water. These are kind of like taps, but they can move a lot of water. Like you can imagine, this one is for pumping water into the truck. And you can see that's a really big pipe. Lots of water goes in there. And these ones are water for water coming out. And then up here we've got some more. And they've got hoses attached already. They're called pre-connects with fire hoses and nozzles. And we can pull this off, stretch it out, and pump water to it right away. It's already connected. Because everything has to be quick at a fire. Where does, um, so the water that goes in, that comes yeah. from the fire hydrants? It can either come from a fire hydrant or it could get sucked in like by a straw. These tubes up here are uh, they're called hard suction hoses, and like a straw, we can suck water out of a lake or a pond or a tank. Wow. And on Salt Spring, we don't have a lot of fire hydrants, so a lot of times we are sucking water out of a lake or a pond. Then there's all of these drawers are full of tools. As I said, it's like a giant toolbox. And this shows you some of the different types of tools we use. So here is our tools for hooking up to fire hydrants, and these are called gates. So this would go get threaded onto the hydrant. We take the cap off, put this on, and you can see this is like it's like a gate. And as I open this up, the gate opens and closes. <laughs> so that's how we can control the water coming out of the fire hydrant. We've got nozzles, really big ones and smaller ones. We've got adapters for hooking up to things. 
These are our keys. So, if, you know, if you can't get into your house, we can get into your house because we've got keys. So these are all things for breaking doors and windows and locks. So we've got, for example, you might have heard of um, the jaws of life. And these are hydraulic jaws and they're kind of like scissors for cutting cars. And they're also pinchers for grabbing metal and moving it. And they're very strong. It's operated by this little pump. Wow. Well, it can be frightening for people involved, but we're there to help and we want to make it get better as fast as possible. That's kind of our big goal. Yes. When we see you on the scene, we don't need to be afraid. We can feel calmer yeah. if you're there. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you want to see some more things on the truck? Let's go. Here's all of our medical things. Mm -hmm. So if somebody's hurt and they need a band-aid or they're having trouble breathing, we have some oxygen. So these are our medical tools. We've got some little, uh, these are traffic cones, so if there's a car crash, we want to make sure people don't drive into us. I've seen those before. We've got these cones that we'll set up around to show people where to drive and where not to drive. Yeah. We've got more fire hoses. Wow. Lots of fire hoses. It might be a good time to ask, what is like the most common call you get, would oh, you yeah. say? Well, so interestingly, even though our, we're firefighters, our most common call is a medical emergency. Okay. On, on any given day, we go, on average, we go to about one medical call a day. Uh -huh. uh, we end up going to a fire about once every few weeks, uh, maybe even once every two weeks. This time of year, mostly outdoor fires. Then in the winter, we have house fires. Wow. And, uh, and then we go to about a car crash a week. It's oh kind of God. what we see on average. On the island? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, wow. people have to get better at driving. They do, apparently. Yeah. Well, I think when I was in labor with my baby, I, there was a fire truck that came as well. So you exactly. show up we for that. Those too. Yeah, very cool. Mm -hmm. Way more fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, and there's lots of hose up here too. So much hose. This is all full of hose. So sometimes we have to carry water a really long way. Wow. So we have lots of hose for if we have to move water from one place to another. So this truck might drop, this is 800 feet of hose, to carry the water from one truck to another truck. Wow. If we need to. That looks like a jetpack. <laughs> kind of like a jetpack. So this is called um, a self-contained breathing apparatus. And if you know anything about diving, it looks a little bit like a scuba tank yeah. for people to swim underwater. The reason we use this is you can't breathe smoke. Smoke will make you really sick. So we bring a tank full of clean air. So we wear a mask that looks like this. And it gets connected to this tube that we can draw air from this bottle full of clean air through the tube into the mask. And that way we don't breathe the smoke because smoke, smoke will make you sick. Right. So um, this is our, our clean air. And it's really important for people to know, don't ever breathe smoke. It'll make you really sick. You, you might notice if you have weed smoke, it'll make you cough and feel bad. One trick, if you are in a fire and you don't have one of these, is you could crawl low because the smoke wants to go up high. So that's another thing that we do, is we crawl low under smoke. So the inside of the truck, well, is a lot like almost any other truck, but we've got a couple of little things that are different. One is we've got the controls here for how to switch the pump on. So the motor that drives the truck to drive it fo forward is also the same motor that operates the pump to suck water out of a lake and pump water out of the hoses. And we can, with this little switch here, we can change the job of the motor from driving the wheels to driving the pump. Oh, wow. And that's how we switch it. So the motor can do both jobs. You also have, we have the, the radio up there for how to talk to the other trucks. And way up high here is where we control all the flashy lights. And I can actually put those on if you want to see those. I would love to see the flashy lights. This thing hanging on the green cord, this is a kind of camera that helps us see heat. Or we can see where the fire is, or we can also see people <laughs> with that as well, because wow. they're warmer they're than warm, other yeah. things. Yeah. That just gives you an idea of the kinds of things in here. So this is our coffee room and a place where we have our lunches, our snacks. And we have a little kitchen back there for making more snacks and coffee. 
And um, so people work here every day, and this is our place to eat, but we also have, some firefighters don't work here, they only come when there's an emergency, but they can also come by and visit, and sometimes that's why there's some extra couches. And then when we're finished our school, our training, sometimes we'll sit and visit and chat with each other as friends. So this is our gym, and as you were saying earlier, a lot of the equipment we lift is really heavy, and some of the things we do, we have to exert ourselves, and we don't want to get hurt, and we want to be able to do our jobs. So we've got like an exercise bike, and a running track, and some weights to keep ourselves healthy and fit. So we do all that, and then one more thing that's kind of fun to point out, this is our, our, our calendar, like you might have in your school, showing all the different things we're gonna learn each month. So for example, we did some water rescue stuff with our boat, we practiced some ropes and knots, we practiced using a fan to blow smoke out of buildings, we did a whole bunch of stuff with our fire props, practicing fire, this was practicing our medical skills, um, some stuff with boat fires, elevator rescues, different water supply systems, and some practices with hose and nozzle. What can we do at our home to keep us safe, to prevent fires, to detect or know when there's a fire? What would you suggest? Well, a couple of key things is make sure you have a working smoke alarm. Smoke alarms are really important, and their main job is to wake you up if you're sleeping, to let you know that there's smoke. Because sometimes if you're asleep, the smoke might just make you more sleepy. And as I said, we can't breathe smoke, it makes us sick. So you want to have the smoke alarm up on the ceiling. I can see one right up there. And if there was smoke, it would alert us. It makes a loud noise, wakes us up. And then if you do hear the smoke alarm, you need to know what to do. And the smoke alarm is telling you, get out, stay out. So we hear the smoke alarm, we get out. Where do we go? We should go to our meeting place. So a really good thing to do is talk to your family and figure out, where's our meeting place? So maybe for our meeting place at the fire hall, could be the fire hydrant right outside. We all know where the fire hydrant is. We're going to go meet at the fire hydrant if we hear the smoke alarm. The good thing about having a meeting place is that way everybody in the family knows where everybody is. So if we all go out different doors, I'm not going to be thinking, oh no, where's Catherine? She's going to be yeah. at another door going, oh no, where's Mitchell? Yeah. All the same place, we all know where are So knowing um, that you've got a working smoke alarm is important, having a meeting place is really important. Those would be a couple of the things I think are really important for kids to know. And as we talked about, is knowing your address oh, as yeah. well and how to call 911. Yeah. Very important. Very important. So here's the, the thing fires in the house, the number one cause of fires, the number one location for fires is in kitchens. The number one cause of fires in kitchens is, is um, unattended food. So people are cooking and then they leave the food and go do something else. So if you notice your family's cooking something and they end up having to go somewhere else, as a kid you can say, hey mom, dad, you need to go back into the kitchen where the food is. You have to look when you cook. You have to see where the food is and look when you cook. Look when you cook, that rhymes, I like that. Then for campfires, there's a couple of little things. One is when you, when you want to have a campfire, and campfires are fun, I like campfires, but you want to have some water ready with you before you make the fire. In case there's a problem, you want to be able to put it out quickly. So either you have a garden hose coming out to where your campfire is, or maybe if you're at a place far away from a garden hose, you want to bring some buckets of water so you can put the fire out quickly. And then when you leave, you really want to make sure the fire is out. So we'll pour water on, and what we do as firefighters is I'd bring a shovel too, and kind of mix the, the water and the, the dirt around a bit, kind of make a little bit of a, a warm mud to make sure it's really out. We, in firefighting, we do something called cold trailing, and once we're really sure the fire is out, we'll, we'll actually touch the, the ground and make sure it's cool for the time. So maybe a grown-up should do that part? Definitely. Yeah. Because yeah. you wouldn't want to burn your hand if there was still some fire. Yeah, no. And if it's smoking, does that mean it could still um, light up again? Or is it's that... a really good yeah. question. So smoke and water vapor can look very much alike. So sometimes what might look like smoke might actually just be steam and that would be uh, hot water coming off. Um, so it's good to wait a little bit and see. If it was steam, it'll stop. And if it's still smoking, it might not last a little longer. So it's good to stay after you put out a fire, wait a few more minutes, and see if the smoke goes away. Is it steam or is it smoke? Okay, that's great. Those are amazing tips. 
Thank you so much for having us here. This is so exciting. As I said, this is my very first time, and you made it. You made me feel really safe because now I, I really have a better idea about what goes on behind the scenes. Excellent. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Wow, everyone, what an amazing field trip that was for Explore Make Do. Like I said, I've never been to a fire station. It was fascinating. And I had a lot of mixed feelings because when I think about a fire or an accident or an emergency, I feel a little bit scared. Do you? A little bit? Sometimes? So I was a little bit nervous when I went there, but when I met the firefighter, and I saw all the training they do and all the hard work they put in, it made me feel really good and really safe so that I know that if something happens, I know to call 911 and they're gonna come and they're gonna make everything okay again. So now you know that too. And we learned some really great tips, so I hope you keep them in your noggin, especially this summer making campfires. Okay, everyone. I had such a beautiful time with you this lesson. You all did so wonderful and have worked so, so hard. I just want to remind you that all of this work that you do, you can share it with me in the Discord chat group. So if you check out our Patreon, you can join our Discord chat group. There's live story time twice a month. We have private tutoring. There's over 100 resources there as well. So feel free to check out that link below and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Oh, and there's going to be a part two of our fire station visit. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. So be sure to press the notification bell so you don't miss that one. All right, let's end our lesson as we end all of them with our affirmation. Remember, an affirmation is something that we say that is true. So even though we might not feel it, if we say it out loud, it becomes true in our heart. So repeat after me. I am kind. I am smart. I am important. You are. You are so, so, so important to me and to this whole planet we live on. And I'm so happy you came today. <sighs> Don't you just feel like you want to breathe sometimes? Let's just take a deep breath together. Ready? feels good. All right, everyone. I look forward to seeing you in our next lesson. All my love. Be kind always, and we'll see you next time. Mwah! <laughs>